break. And um, I uh, will have the privilege to moderate this panel, uh, which will look into innovative process in Europe, into smart specialization from a bit different angle, and will, in a way, upgrade the discussion that uh, has started uh, uh, in the previous panel. Uh, actually, it was uh, my intention to uh, call in the panelists, but they are already uh, on the table. So I will uh, then uh, maybe very briefly introduce the topic and uh, join them on the panel for uh, hearing different, uh, different perspectives. So uh, when we speak about academia and business, uh, very often, and um, I expect that you agree with me, uh, we perceive and speak for uh, different communities that have different language and different speed and different um, uh, understanding on the innovation process. And um, of course, in the last um, couple of years, I would say in the last program period, uh, if we speak in the European terms, lots of uh, good examples can be given on how those two different communities, and we also uh, should that, of course, policy maker as the uh, third uh, uh, angle of the uh, important triangle, uh, has started the collaboration, but still, uh, we need to stimulate the process if we want to be fast enough and to uh, cope with the changes and to be the leader in the innovative process uh, of the world. Uh, we need to create an environment where innovation process includes uh, research, uh, uh, business players, uh, new emerging businesses into one common lean process. And uh, what are the challenges and what are the opportunities and what are the solutions uh, into this process is what we'll discuss in the next something like 15 minutes with an extremely interesting uh, panel that uh, uh, our ladies and gentlemen next to me. Uh, we have... Um, Peter Statev, uh, who is uh, uh, himself a um, uh, very senior business person from Bulgaria, but he's also uh, one of the uh, co-founders and uh, current um, uh, chair of the collaborative network uh, on a Balkany uh, region, and uh, he'll share, I'm sure, about uh, uh, this uh, experience in a minute. Um, one thing that I don't want to miss is that uh, one recent successful uh, initiative is um, uh, the foundation of uh, one of the Bulgarian Digital Innovation Hub, and uh, uh, Mr. Statev is participating uh, together with two more organizations in, in, uh, in the field. So I see him as uh, uh, very well qualified to share with us uh, uh, what is the business perspective, but also the collaborative cluster-based uh, 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 innovation process uh, that was uh, one of the, uh, of the accents of the previous uh, panel debates, as also uh, this uh, holistic, uh, I would call, innovation process that uh, uh, digital innovation hubs are giving. Uh, Actually, we have also on the panel uh, Stefano Fantoni. Uh, Professor Fantoni is from Trieste. Um, some of you may know that Trieste will be the, um, uh, the center of science in 2020. So we'll hear more about this project, which also is a very, very good example on this uh, uh, collaborative, place-centric, uh, innovative activity. Uh, we also have with us uh, Istvandjar Khan uh, from World Bank. Uh, Istvandjan uh, is working with lots of European uh, uh, countries and um, is working um, uh, on projects that are supporting um, uh, innovative policies and building up an effective mechanism, so he will give uh, as this more structural view on the topic. And um, 
Uh, I also, uh, I'm very happy to have uh, Katarina Seretti from the EIT. EIT was mentioned a couple of times, actually, in every single session uh, from this morning, and this is on purpose because uh, European Institute for Innovation and Technologies has been uh, and uh, still is uh, uh, a real, true example on uh, how you drive, prepare, educate, stimulate education uh, by boosting the ecosystem, different players. Uh, so, uh, last but not least, uh, we have uh, Galia Angelova. She is uh, from the uh, Institute of Innovation and Communication Technology to the Bulgarian Academy of Science, and uh, she will introduce a very inter interesting Bulgarian example on uh, innovative uh, uh, lingu linguistic solution. So, we have, uh, I think, uh, a good... Uh, uh, portfolio of uh, viewpoints of expertise on the topic how business and academia can uh, go together with this uh, couple of introductory words uh, uh, I want to invite uh, Mr. Statev uh, for a short intervention from his perspective and will join the panel Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Am I right to consider this session as a wake-up session after the nice lunch? Uh, I'll try to support wake-up process for everyone. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much to uh, Sasha Bezukhanova for a nice introduction and immediately to step in the challenges which I want to address in, in my speech. We're living in uh, very fast dynamic changes. If you consider what's happened uh, in technology world, you will see that it, the changes of technology, the changes of services and products are, uh, happens faster and faster and faster. And even we can, can't imagine uh, how long this will continue. From the other side, uh, with the processes of globalization, we're living in an open market, hopefully. But this also means we're living in a, a world of fierce compet uh, competition. And today it's very complex uh, to, for, even for a big corporation uh, to monitor and to control the information flows. From one side, we can recognize uh, this highly uh, dynamic changes uh, in both technology and social uh, world. From other side, our social system and, by example, educational system are not changing uh, fast enough. And also, when uh, we will jump into the region, I mean Southeast Europe, we can recognize that we have one additional problem. It's a simple fact that in most of the uh, national states, the ecosystem uh, aiming to support innovation and entrepreneurship are fragmented, under financed, and not completed. That is why, uh, during the second half of last year, uh, three, organization, uh, three organizations, Technical University of Sofia, uh, Bulgarian ICT Cluster, and uh, MOVE NGO, decided uh, to build new entity, a digital innovation hub, aiming uh, to offer answers, methodologies, tools to the uh, above mentioned uh, problems. So what we aim to do is to create new generation, to support process of creation of new generation expert, to build knowledge, skills, educational standards and content which are ready to address uh, the challenges of transformation to digital economy. Why this is so, so difficult? Uh, if you see the number of articles published every day on a web, uh, you'd, you'd guess that everything is clear. What you need is simply to read this article and immediately to implement in your uh, everyday operations of your company, NGO, uh, university, whatsoever. 
uh, unfortunately doesn't work this way. We're living in an ocean of information and it is absolutely difficult and in some cases impossible to gather the proper bunch of information and to take the proper decision. That is why the services of similar uh, entities like Digital Innovation Hub are extremely important. They are extremely important because you, you have not time to read two years and then to take decision. You should make it, you shall make it immediately because no one will wait. Uh, how we dream to, to achieve the goals I mentioned already. First of all, we need a proven and proper assessment methodology which uh, to be offered to different levels of uh, economy players, companies, clusters, uh, bigger consortiums. It's extremely important to all of us, we to be able to understand exactly where we are, how we how close to the digital readiness or to digitalization of processes we are. Then, of course, uh, our Digital Innovation Hub already uh, established uh, some services, which is uh, development and uh, validation of uh, different tools, solutions, and uh, I will not uh, read it uh, one by one. Um, you can do it, and uh, I want to, to go to, the at least for me, the most important question. We are in the mid of spring time of 2018. Why we still are talking about the business academia cooperation? I can remember that my first European funded projects for how to support and how to boost technology transformation was in 2006. Now we are in 2018. And still we are talking about the technology transformation, about the business academia cooperation, it's not easy because the, the answer is very complex and touching the culture, uh, the value chains. But I try to resume what is in my mind. Still in Europe, we are slow moving on the process of transforming R&D results uh, into the industrial products and services. The market offering and the market at who, markets at who, especially Southeast Europe, are very fragmented. Only on West Balkans. You can count uh, many small national states, each with each uh, border, custom, regulation. Uh, doesn't work this way. We are talking about creation of European uh, digital common market. And this is impossible to be done if we will still follow the old fashion how the, state, the national states were governed uh, age ago. And in res uh, to resume, I shall say that the seeds of shared economy, the principle in which I am truly convinced, uh, are still in a sprout phase. And we don't have a time to wait the whole cycle of growing. So what we need, I'm finishing with, we need, no doubt, common market. We need modern national policies, uh, basis based on principle of intelligence specialization, but within the frame of uh, shared economy paradigm. No any, even the biggest company from Southeast Europe would be able to directly to compete with the uh, big corporation on the global market. We need to take care and to change the educational system. We need to change balance of investment in each national state in between infrastructure and citizen ability to recognize, get oriented and free sailing in, in the modern world. The question is uh, behind this very general uh, statements, what we do in our digital innovation hub each of the founders already have a proven experience to support digital transformation. Four years ago, we created Balkan and Black Sea ICT cluster networks, which is recognized already in, on the European level. And here is an example uh, I gave on two projects. The project Smart Factory Hub, based on which we are uh, 
already in phase of implementation of methodology of assessment of digital readiness, Project GIFT 2, which aims to build cross-sector cooperation. Uh, there is an extremely interesting project initiated by Sasha and uh, her uh, Move BG, which started as Bulgarian initiative, but today is Pan Balkan, and it's mapping the players in innovational ecosystem and even on a company level. And last but not least, member of our Digital Innovation Hub is uh, Center for Excellence in Technology and Development uh, and Transfer from Tech uh, Sofia Technical University, which already offers services not only for companies in Bulgaria, but uh, in automotive sector like Audi or uh, BMW. I try to resume on a very short manner what by our common experience uh, are factors to be successful in the process of supporting digital transformation. First of all, new generation leaders. Second, access to risk financing and open markets. Availability to modern facilities for research and product and service piloting. Supportive society culture. Here I want to stop and to outline. This is extremely important. Supportive culture means if an entrepreneur will fail, it's not a supportive to say what a dummy man, but it's supportive to say, to say uh, he or she is on a, a learning curve. Auspicious conditions for scientists, researchers, and technology de de uh, developers' mobility. We don't need borders. It's a wrong. And last again, but not least, because we are competing on global manner, we need proven and trusted networks uh, among uh, labs and faculties from universities, companies, clusters, science and technology parks. If this happens, we have a chance to be a world leaders in technology development. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, this was uh, uh, large in information and ideas introduction uh, to the topic. Um, I now want to um, invite uh, Professor uh, Stefano Fantoni, uh, who is our next speaker. As I've mentioned, uh, um, the Trieste uh, is a very, very good example. But Professor Fantoni uh, is uh, uh, also one of the leading uh, experts uh, into concepts for how to transform scientific uh, uh, results into business and is uh, a very active member of the uh, local ecosystem. So, Professor Fantoni, would you share with us uh, your experience from Trieste and uh, your perspective on how we can um, marry these two, uh, two uh, worlds, academia and business? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, uh, thank you for your presentation, but uh, thank you all, and particularly the, the possibility of being here and being invited in this uh, in these uh, important conferences. Uh, uh, that is important uh, uh, for us uh, to, for us, I mean, uh, the team uh, that is behind this, uh, this adventure that we are perceiving now, uh, because we need to to listen uh, all the net and all the uh, activity that is done in terms of science and innovation. Uh, and it's also important to, for me to give you information on what we are doing uh, at the moment uh, and in order to, to invite you on 2020 to, be, to come to Trieste and, uh, and present. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I would like to give you the stage of all I've heard here. The stage, uh, Trieste will be a stage for this. And if uh, it will be possible to have results, analysis, uh, the same or more, or whatever, that would be a fantastic event. Uh, so uh, I have, as you see, I have a PowerPoint that I, I hope to be able to... Okay. Uh, you see, in, the first, in this first slide, you see, uh, it, it is just a presentation of Euroscience. Euroscience is the biggest... Uh, uh, association of uh, um, scientific uh, popularization of divulgation of science in, in Europe. 
And then you see there, we, I mean, the various uh, uh, city that has been uh, city of science in the previous uh, editions. Uh, with, uh, it started with Stockholm in 2004, and now is Toulouse, uh, the city of science. Uh, we, will, we will take over uh, just in July of this year from Toulouse the, the flag of, uh, of this nomination and we will carry out uh, up to 2020. Uh, but I mean, just, uh, just that you see, I mean, most of this uh, city uh, does not uh, belong to the part of uh, uh, East Central Europe. Uh, on the contrary, uh, um, the project that we have been uh, presenting and, uh, and the reason why, I could, the main reason why I've been selected and nominated is because uh, we wanted to spread out and include uh, the territory, large territory, which is the territory which includes uh, Eastern and Central countries. And that's why I'm very interested and I thank you again very much for being here because actually, uh, that is actually what we would like to, to, to achieve. Uh, uh, that is giving the, the, the second motivation, the first motivation, the, second, the first mission that we had, I, I told you already on the, on the previous slide, which is the fact that we want to include uh, this large territory. The second is uh, to open a discussion on science, uh, and, uh, and that is the motto that we have seen been selected, which, uh, m which gives to the science uh, these uh, two aspects, two facets. Uh, one is uh, the, um, a, a science which is absent on prejudice, and the second one which is uh, inclusive. And, uh, and I think and we, we are looking forward uh, uh, all the events to be substantially, transversally promoted to, to this, to this motto. From this slide, you see uh, the, uh, in w the support that we had from all the various countries, all these uh, um, uh, circles uh, gives you the idea of how many support letters that we have received from all these countries, and so uh, the interest that, uh, that all, of, all of you have given to us. Uh, the, location, the location that we have been selected is the location which is not the uh, Congress Center is not existing at the moment. It is an old arbor, uh, and, uh, which is called Porto Vecchio in Trieste. Uh, and uh, this, this old, old arbor, uh, we want to change it into innovation arbor, and that's why, I mean, uh, and that is why we're working on it. And, and uh, uh, the event in 2020 should be the inauguration of this uh, new age of this arbor. Uh, this is uh, just... Uh, uh, and uh, is, a, is a picture that gives what we believe will be at, at that moment uh, uh, in 2020. Uh, so what we are doing now, what we are doing now is to, uh, um, we have been initiating the process towards 2020. We call this process pro as of, uh, and uh, uh, that is a, a sort of innovation with respect to the previous edition. Uh, exactly because we need to include and to attract as much as possible uh, the uh, country uh, of the Central European uh, Europe. So, uh, what, what is the instrument that we have been invented for this? This is the, the instrument is called a Trieste Encounter on Science and Innovation, which is a sort of call of ideas. So we're starting bottom up. Uh, you see in the picture the man who is coordinating this, uh, this activity is Bruno de la Vedova. And uh, so actually all of, all, of, all of you actually are invited to join to this, to this, to this uh, activity. Uh, what it will be the legacy, this is an important aspect uh, that uh, I think uh, you should bring forward on. Uh, the legacy that you want to leave is uh, to have a, uh, to make become this stage as a real uh, agora where science and innovation uh, talk each other and uh, in a, a very informal meeting that will stay in, in a beautiful place where one can come and, and doing vacation also. Uh, 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 close to that there will be a new science center in Trieste that will be mainly dedicated to the sea but uh, it will be, f it will have uh, uh, a living lab, it will have a farm lab, as we have heard from previous. Uh, uh, but in general, we want to have uh, 
uh, we have to create the uh, say all the all what is needed or at least try to do that in order to uh, to really focus on the innovation um, uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, the, I, the, the team of science to business is the main important for us. Uh, and, uh, and this team is, is conjugated with innovation, big data, and, and all this. Uh, and uh, we have been created already uh, a science to business committee, a local one, uh, and uh, an European one will be uh, nominated, as presumably, at the end of 2018. And uh, the next activity of, uh, of this thesi of this Trieste encounter on science and innovation is it will be uh, a, a workshop um, that will be dedicated to European research infrastructure to be held exactly in that area. And that will focus on the alignment of the uh, research infrastructure and policy investment uh, on the funding policy uh, for this uh, infrastructure and, uh, and, and substantially uh, the relation of this infrastructure to business and citizen. Uh, so uh, there will be three sections, one section on low carbon economy, a second section on health and wealth, and the third one on high performance computing, big data and applied math. Okay, that is, uh, I thank you very much and then yeah. you can see our team. Yeah, it was very good um, information on what is happening uh, in terms of preparation of um, uh, the Fiesta as uh, uh, European Capital Science for 2020. I'm sure lots of people in the audience uh, will be interested also to follow on. Thank you for introducing it. Uh, I uh, would like the rest of the panelists to be a bit uh, faster. Uh, uh, we have a hard stop. Uh, organizers ask me to uh, really strictly consider the time because there is a next event, uh, an exhibition that needs to be open on time. Uh, so uh, that's why I uh, uh, just uh, want to ask uh, Mr. Khan, do you think that uh, policy reforms are the uh, solution? Do you think that um, the uh, process goes top down? Or uh, you have a different view based on your experience uh, in uh, reforming uh, or advising on reform of innovative ecosystems in different European countries? Uh, sure. No, thank you very much again, Sasha and GRC and the Bulgarian presidency for, for having us here. Great. Um, in sort of response to that question and also um, on, on, on our intervention and based on the conversations we've heard this morning, you know, I wanted to just like talk a little bit about sequencing the reform itself. Uh, and we've sort of heard about innovation in a, in a broad, broader spectrum. But the fact is you have maybe three types of innovation systems that are more, so one that's more mature, one that's more insignient, which is growing, and one that is sort of in the middle ground. And really the, our interventions and policy approaches for all three of these stages needs to be segregated. And in these countries that is the focus itself, you have various approaches there. So when we're talking about, let's say, an earlier innovation, insipid uh, innovation system itself, the focus as we heard today on STEM, in, um, STEM education itself, on eliminating, bar eliminating barriers also. And when you're talking about a little bit more mature um, sort of a innovation system, it's about minimizing the innovation gap between leaders and laggards, uh, and also the focusing on long-term R&D. In our target countries, it's a little bit of mix of both. So, the, so what we always say on, um, on the areas which we're right, right in your middle ground of the innovation system, is you sort of incentivize the R&D infrastructure and you import, um, improve the export infrastructure. And then linked to your second point, which is on our topic, I mean, one issue that I had um, with, with, with the topic itself, it's how business cooperates with academia. You know, I mean, maybe it can be how business and academia cooperate with each other, or maybe it should be how academia cooperates with business. So it, seem, it seems that the focus is really 
on the business side to go out there and talk to academia, whereas the reverse should be true. And when you look at the research institutions in, in this part of the world itself, um, we feel that in a way to make sure that they are reaching the goals themselves, you have to have some sort of a, sort of a KPI metrics that looks in terms of outputs, in terms of outreach to the private sector. And when we look globally, so for example, in uh, Singapore is a program called Spring. 75% uh, of people on that board are from the private sector. In uh, Colombia, they have a program. In Brazil, they have a program where the private sector pays to be part of the research institution. So in the sense, it was great that the Regio and everybody has a lot of money, but having a lot of money in terms of a policy response is, is not the best answer because it's good to have money, but also to show that the private sector wants to be part of the research institution, ask them for fees. If they pay fees, they value the service itself. So in a way, just really looking at the whole academia infrastructure through in the innovation system in the EU countries and also in the neighborhood to kind of have much more active role for the private sector itself. At this forum, in policy making, in peer reviewers itself, I mean, within, within the continent, we always look at Finland. Um, both Finland and Chile, every three years, they take their innovation program, they take it out, outside and have an external peer review done by it. So no one that's involved in the program has any view, but it's an external review of the innovation system of how the money is spent and how the research institutions are responding to demands of the private sector. So it's a long-winded answer, but I just wanted to raise that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Estevian. Uh, I'm uh, still a little bit provoked if uh, business should go to academia or academia should go to business. Um, my opinion is that they need to sit on a round table and uh, also next with them on the table to be the startup businesses, those uh, STEM guys that are creating innovation already in school and um, how this commercializes later on, sometimes uh, this bypasses uh, the classic academic institution. But uh, I think Katarina is uh, perfectly uh, qualified to continue on this topic because uh, really uh, EIT uh, has managed uniquely, in my view, to bring around the round ta table different stakeholders and uh, to look at beyond the uh, scientific ne network or education. So, Katerina, uh, what is your view on uh, improving, making more efficient, faster transfer of knowledge from science to business? It's not working. Uh, ah, now it's working, finally. Talking about innovation, huh? Okay, so first of all, thank you. Uh, that was an excellent introduction to my part. Um, first of all, let me thank you and JRC for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here and contribute in this discussion. Uh, sharing on behalf of the EIT, our experience in enhancing collaboration between business and academia. Um, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology creates, guides, and enhances innovation networks based on pan-European partnerships between um, universities, research organizations, businesses, industry, and SMEs, uh, public authorities, and other innovation actors. We do that by creating pan-European partnerships, the eight innovation communities, or else KICs. These innovation communities work towards finding innovative solutions in global societal challenges, related to climate change, active aging, um, sustainable energy, and, and more. And they do that by implementing activities through the entire value chain. So that is something unique, from, educate, from education to, to market. Um, currently, we have six innovation communities that bring together more over, over than 1,000 partners, excellent partners. And they do, do it in a very unique way. So, talking about the concrete example, of collaboration between uh, academia and business. I think one of the main challenges is the fragmentation of the landscape, the reduced collaboration at different levels of governance. 
Um, so from our side, I will share our own example of how we work uh, in this particular point. So one of the added values of the ATE is that it integrates education, the education dimension in the uh, innovation web. This is something that is missing usually very often uh, from the traditional research and, uh, and business partnerships. Our innovation communities work together with their uh, partners from the academia in developing education programs based focusing on innovation entrepreneurship. Uh, these programs might be master degrees, PhD degrees, professional learning, uh, short courses, there are different, many different kinds. But what is the actual point, the actual added value of these programs is that they combine specialist knowledge with skills that foster innovation and entrepreneurship. This is very important. This is a T-shaped approach that also includes hands-on experience with access to the infrastructure of the ecosystem of our partners. And just to give a very, very concrete example of how this actually works, our innovation community working on climate change, EAT Climate Kick, has a program, a mobility scheme that is called Pioneers into Practice. Actually, this provides the opportunity to young professionals to gain experience by four to six week placement um, and, and intensive mentoring, uh, innovation mentoring through workshops and trainings. For this program to take place, EAT Climate Kicks partners from over 15 countries work together. The host of this program, because it's also a mobility scheme, our universities, our public authorities, um, research organizations, industry partners, SMEs, all these different kinds. So this is a very, very good example of, thing of how excellent collaboration between all key actors of an innovation ecosystem can actually bring important education programs, important uh, training, uh, the change in the agents, let's say, of tomorrow, based on the actual needs of the private sector. Um, just to conclude, as I know that we're a bit tight in time, one key message from my side regarding the good practices is that we need to create the right conditions for innovation to flourish. So from our own experience, I can confirm, that is actually confirmed by medium evaluation of the, of the EIT, that knowledge triangle integration, the enhanced collaboration that is between business research and education, creates knowledge, enhances knowledge transfer. And this creates new types of collaboration. Collaboration that actually reduces from fragmentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Katarina. Uh, I was thinking while listening to you that uh, uh, already linguistic, semantic, uh, we uh, have uh, um, quite a, a synergetic process because we are talking about uh, entrepreneurial dynamics in the science in, on, as a horizontal skill. At the same time, even today, we've been talking a lot about experimenting in school, experimenting in the business, um, not supporting uh, mentality-wise as a social support uh, infrastructure, uh, failure in the business and a new experiment. I think that uh, uh, science is uh, more into concepts of business and the other way around and uh, the language helps. And speaking about language, I uh, just want to uh, pass the word to an expert in linguistic. Uh, this is uh, uh, Professor uh, Galia Angelova. Uh, she is, as I've introduced her at the beginning, in the uh, Bulgarian Academy of Science, and uh, she is, uh, uh, will introduce to us an innovative project uh, in the field that is uh, very applicable for the uh, new business uh, intelligent uh, uh, intelligent technologies. Galia. Thank you for the introduction and uh, thank you also for the invitation to GRC and the panelists. Actually I come from artificial intelligence I think that uh, natural intelligence is something very complex and we'll be talking about the relations between natural and <laughs> artificial intelligence several decades, if not an age. But now um, I would like to show us, uh, to present a success story about a um, project which I coordinated some time ago and it includes some aspects of uh, natural language processing. 
Uh, this was a project uh, funded by the European Commission in the RecPod1 program. Uh, you probably know that uh, this is about capacity development and it was funded very gener uh, generously by 3 million euro. Uh, the title of the project is Advanced Computing for Innovation. So uh, the schema is that uh, we buy new devices, frankly speaking, there were no new devices in the academy for about 20, 25 years. So speaking about uh, Balkan countries, Western Balkans, uh, probably people from Western Europe do not understand exactly what it means in academic environment not, not to have new equipment for 20 years or something. Anyway, we purchased it, upgraded the infrastructure, developed some research capacity, created new technologies, and the explicit condition of the commission is that uh, this is ICT, we have to find users, and somehow to go to the companies and try to, uh, to make real patents and pre-industrial products. Uh, this was a capacity project from the last call of the RecPot1 program, so we started uh, the last uh, year before Horizon. Uh, the project was in four uh, areas, which are uh, central for the institute, high performance computing, 3D technologies. Uh, at that time, 3D technologies were not so popular. We were one of the first. Language, speech, signal, and image processing, optimization and intelligent uh, control. And uh, I say immediately that we were very successful. The project is the most successful Bulgaria project included in the uh, commission book achievements of FP7, uh, seven examples that make us proud, and we received some innovation awards in Bulgarian uh, too. Uh, it is not included in, in the slides, but I want to emphasize that within this project we developed one innovation strategy for the institute. Probably this was one of the first innovation strategies for an academic institution in Bulgaria. And now, today, five years later, four years later, we see innovation indicators, including in the ranking parameters of the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences and uh, of the Ministry of Education and Science. And I realize now that there is program, progress, things are changing, but it is much slower than I expected five years ago. So, could be good if, if we can progress more, more quickly. So when we started the project uh, about s uh, smart specialization, you have a unique set of modern devices. You have money to employ 10, 15 very good postdocs from Ukraine, Macedonia, Serbia, m more or less neighboring countries, but also people from Greece, Italy. This was one international community. So uh, if you have uh, uh, this money and this opportunity, what would you do? What is unique in your expertise that is needed for the industry, Bulgarian industry, foreign industry, or for the society in general. And I immediately tell you that the most difficult thing uh, was to find users. This was one uh, notion invented by the commission. You have to go to the companies and offer your research results. So we did, uh, within these three years of the project, we uh, organized 20 technology transfer seminars and more than 500 people attended. And this war, uh, was in all areas of our expertise, which I showed in the previous slide. This is relatively broad uh, area, but at the same time, very diverse. So you can contact companies from different sectors. And this was very difficult to find these people uh, using private connections, Bulgarian Chamber of Commerce, uh, colleagues from Technical University, from Sofia University. There is no single, uh, single space when you can find uh, uh, companies that are uh, ready to absorb innovation. So we ended up with uh, 20 contracts for industrial research, five contracts with academic organizations from, the, uh, from Europe and the USA. Uh, we had uh, many projects from the uh, operational program competitiveness while the project was selling, and now we have even more, and we mm, filed 10 patent requests. And um, to me today, uh, the, the general challenge is how to find funding to upgrade one research prototype to a pre-industrial prototype. Let me show you only one example and uh, finish. A novel result uh, with University of Pavia. What we see to the left 
is a, a tactile a plate, let it call it plate. This is a picture, famous picture by Anibale Karachi. And uh, uh, we, we see the plate and with contours and contour graphic, we see uh, seven figures uh, segmented and shown, and they are annotated with different letters in the Braille alphabet. It is in Italian, and to the right of the plate, you see in Braille a short description uh, about the picture and the le legend of the notation. So to the right, we see three pictures. Uh, down, we see how this plate is shown in the Brera Gallery next in Milan, next to the original plate. Up, we see the hands of a visually, visually impaired uh, boy who reads with the right hand and touches the contours with the left uh, hand. And up, we see the semantic annotation uh, with braille letters more clearly. What is innovative here? Each figure, as shown on the plate, is a separate single segment. There is no one digital object behind this plate but there are segments of figures. So if you have a braille display, you can show these segments separately, uh, zooming them up and down. Uh, so you can think about some sort of multimedia for blind people. And in order to develop this display and the associated content, you need about uh, some funding. And this is, to me, most difficult to find. Funding for passing to pre-industrial prototype. Thank you. We have uh, just a few minutes left, uh, and, uh, but still I want to invite, if there is a question from the audience, uh, feel free uh, to participate in our dialogue uh, with a very short and very concrete question to one or two of the, of the panelists. If you want to ask a question, just raise a hand and we will organize uh, that uh, your voice is, uh, is heard. If not, if not um, to conclude, I uh, will ask every one of the panelists, if you can, in just one sentence, mention uh, one most important factor for uh, transfer of knowledge uh, from science to business uh, that uh, can help uh, our European ecosystem uh, and uh, European innovation process uh, uh, to strengthen. Galia, we start uh, with you. important thing to me is to contextualize your efforts. What we discovered is that the big companies that come to invest in Bulgaria do not expect research results here. They come with ready solutions, build factories, produce, and export, and so on. So we need to find forms to organize smaller national companies who need innovation, and we, we have to find place to meet them. To meet this is this is our niche. So meeting point is uh, what you, uh, you would suggest as an important uh, factor between the business and academia in an effective and regular way. Okay, thank you. Uh, Stefano? The interaction uh, between science uh, and innovation uh, is, um, is a dynamic one, uh, which means that uh, um, it's very risky to consider the solution or the solutions. I mean, this is something that has to be produced and analyzed uh, in time. Uh, the science and the technology are, are moving very fast. And it is impossible to imagine that something, that there is an exact recipe for for, for this interaction. So, uh, the same as uh, uh, Galia Angelov, I, I would say that uh, one of the things which I, I believe is more important is to try to, to really have a, a true dictionary between the scientists and, and, uh, and the entrepreneurs in order to talk to each other. 
they, both of them, they have to feel part of this important, this inevitable process. Uh, otherwise, uh, I, I think every, both of them will remain in their towers and, uh, and it will be more and more difficult, uh, the interaction that we need desperately. I would, I would suggest a rotation program. Um, so very practically where you have researchers and masters and PhD students that take three months, six months, go to, go to a private firm and spend time there to get an idea of what really the business um, needs are. So perhaps you have Erasmus at the moment and you go to another country and learn the culture of that country, spend a year and that brings you a European community. So similarly, if you have a program or even the absence of a program, a master's or PhD students can spend six months in a private company as part of their program itself, they'll get an idea of what the needs are and vice versa. Okay, thank you. And maybe business uh, students uh, to spend three months in an academic institution just uh, to have this also feeling and uh, flavor of uh, innovation process, if I may add to your proposal, Katerina. Well, I think I gave a very concrete example before of how this could take place from our experience. But let me add two points. The one is the mindset, having the right mindset to be open in collaboration, which is very, very important. And the second is collaboration, not only at the national level, because in this way, this is the silos effect, this is the fragmentation, but also at, at in the regional level. Because you need good examples, um, good practices that might be useful for you, for a national authority for regional authority to use at your own policy mix. One size doesn't fit all. So you really need to consider different cases, different examples, and apply it in your own. Thank you. And mindset, how we change mindset, how we change the culture, that's, uh, uh, that's an important uh, process. Education, family attitude, social dimension. <laughs> okay. Peter? Time is clocking on different manner in academic world and the business world. The outlook from the window of professor and outlook from the window of uh, manager are completely different. So we need specially educated people which will to, to be interpreter in between the two worlds, to be business developer which to ignite recognition and cooperation in between these two different worlds. It doesn't happen automatically. One possible process is to support split off process from university and academia. But again, from after, as I said, 2006 was my first project on this topic. After more than 10 years in this, I strongly believe in Europe, we still have lack of managers for development of science and transformation from a result of R&D to industrial products. Okay, new type of education. So our panel is at the end. It was uh, not uh, uh, an exception compared to the uh, previous panels. Education popped up the most important uh, dimension uh, into how we grow uh, new mentality, new mindset, but also the uh, skills that are uh, really bringing together uh, experts, uh, academic researchers, uh, businesses, people from different backgrounds uh, into an inno innovation uh, path with uh, synergies of uh, different perspectives. I want to uh, thank a lot to, uh, to the distinguished panelists with whom I had a privilege to, uh, to lead the dialogue in the last one hour. Thank you for your intervention and please join me and uh, 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 applause uh, uh, our participants for their intervention. Thank you. Uh, just to guide you a bit for the next step in the program, we have now Coffee Break, which is a networking event. Please go ahead, ask your questions to any of the panelists that uh, you uh, hide it from the others. Uh, please be sharp afterwards for the 
parallel sessions, sharp 3.30, because we have to keep our agenda. Be aware that smart specialization trend will happen here in this room, though it will be a bit empty. Um, the technology transfer will be in uh, room number one, which is on the left-hand side when you go out of this room. And what if I inspire will be on the right, number two. And then we will come together for a very Bulgarian session uh, afterwards, and afterwards we will go and open the JRC exhibition. So enjoy the networking session now. <laughs>